And then I'm going to introduce a couple folks who are going to come up here onto the stage so they can tell you a little bit more about what they do. Uh, let's welcome uh, from Foundation Beyond Belief, Evan Clark. Let's welcome, let's welcome Nancy from the Reason Center. Let's welcome Debbie from the Secular Coalition for America and Evan from the Secular Student Alliance. Why don't you guys come on up and join me on stage? Ryan. Nice. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, Evan, Evan, Ryan. You're both awesome people. <laughs> All right, so they're gonna get a couple minutes to tell you a little bit about what they do. If we have some time for questions, just uh, shout them out and uh, then we'll continue on. So, Evan, tell us about Foundation Beyond Belief. All right, Foundation Beyond Belief. I'm gonna read the official line so I don't screw this up. Uniting the humanist community in charitable efforts and advocating for compassionate action throughout the world. It is ultimately building the largest secular foundation for charitable giving uh, in America and building a culture and a space for you all to do that. It has many programs, including disaster recovery, uh, service corps program. There's a Beyond Belief network, which supports local groups with their own uh, charitable activities and uh, service projects. Also have Humanist Grants, which moves money to highly effective charitable giving that uh, passes the standards of a humanist ethic. And, vol and Volunteer Network, I already mentioned, and uh, my podcast called The Humanist Experience. Please check out Foundation Beyond Belief. So we know that the religious give more to charity than anyone else in the world, and that can change if we all step up. Thank you. Here representing the Reason Center, uh, again, one of our sponsors and just a wonderful place for those here in Sacramento. And I want to say again, thanks to the Reason Center. Some of you may have caught our video on Facebook just on Thursday night. We had used the Reason Center as, as uh, A, our, our meeting space for our committee when we're planning Free Thought Day, but also on Thursday night as our volunteer thank you dinner and uh, our, 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 our basic, our, our workshop to get everything assembled for today. Let's welcome Nancy to talk about it. Thank you, David. Reason Center is a place in Sacramento for people to have meetings, and that meeting uh, preparing for today, it's a great venue for that. We've done a backpack packing night there for our day there for um, helping the homeless in the past and things like that. Uh, the Reason Center has four purposes to support a social and intellectual community for free thinkers. Contribute to society through education and community service. Advance the civic understanding and acceptance of free thinkers. Uphold the separation of religion and government. It's been the efforts of many, many different people. It's still a work in progress. We've been there for four years, and we hope to be there for many more years, but we depend on several things. People becoming members at reasoncenter.org. We have a website where you can join, and your money goes directly in through the website and you can join on a monthly basis. We just need a, you know, a certain number of people to donate a few dollars a month, and that will keep the new lights that we have on. And uh, we have upgraded with new lights, a new projector, and a big screen. So that leads me to, we have two different types of groups who come there. Reason Center has several partner organizations such as Sunday Assembly Sacramento, a uh, Atheists and Other Free Thinkers, um, Humanist Association of Sacramento, Secular Student Alliance. All of those groups can come and have regular meetings there at very, very low fees, and they do. And then we have also just non-member, or we call non-partner groups that can have meetings there at a very low price. It's a good place for that. And so at our table, this flyer will give you all the information you need to have your meetings, events, parties we're going to have we've had one wedding and we're having one memorial service coming up and as i said a, a staging area for marches and backpack uh, assemblies and so forth also next month we're bringing back coffee and community so sunday mornings two sunday mornings a month we gather and just sit around and talk which is what we love to do so um, there, it's been an effort of a lot of people, donations, uh, legacies, legacy donations, but it does take money. But it's, a wonderful, it's wonderful to have a place for people to come together. Not all cities have it. We want to keep it. Thank you all. 
Thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, they've had weddings, they've had birthday parties, Sunday assembly meets there, Hagsa meets there, AOF. I think the skeptics are meeting there. If you need a place, that's a great place to meet. Uh, next up, and thank you, Ryan, for hosting the uh, Authors and Podcasters panel. Ryan was our MC last year for this event. Uh, here to talk to us about the Secular Student Alliance, Ryan Bell. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see everyone. How's it going out there? Feels good. You got some shade now. Uh, I get the privilege of working for the Secular Student Alliance. How many of you have heard of the Secular Student Alliance? I'll bet some of you are even donors to the Secular Student Alliance. You may, want, may not want to confess it publicly, but... Uh, but thank you for your support. Uh, we have about 300 chapters on campuses around the country, including Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Alaska, uh, and of course the mainland. And it's uh, so fun to, to meet students who are just sort of coming into their activism prime as they're in college, expressing themselves, learning new, uh, new truths about the world and about themselves and sort of maybe for some of them leaving their parental uh, you know, nest where maybe it's a Christian environment. Many of our students uh, are up against some of the opposition from their families uh, for their uh, choice to not be religious. And so we have um, all over the country different types of chapters. In the South and in the Midwest, you can imagine they're struggling with more overt religious culture. Um, but around the country, about 40% of 18 to 22 year olds have no religious affiliation. And before long, it's gonna be a majority of 18 to 22 year olds don't have any religious affiliation. And yet campus student life is still dominated by religion. Um, at USC, where I serve as the humanist chaplain, we have over 80 religious groups, uh, distinct religious groups on campus and one secular student alliance. And so uh, it's, it's important that we support our students. And not only that, for those of you that are involved, and in, which is probably all of you, involved in some kind of secular activism, um, the students that are in, in college now are your new recruits when they finish college. They're the people who are going to take the reins uh, and the next generation of leading uh, humanist associations and secular organizations as, as, they, as they get older and move into the workforce. And so by supporting our students, you're really supporting the future of your organizations as well. Uh, which is so why we're so excited to be here at Free Thought Day every year. We have two chapters represented here. Our Sacramento State chapter is over here uh, between the red and green tent. You can stop by and, and see, and actually Kaylee, who's on the committee uh, of for California Free Thought Day and the, and the stage manager for California Free Thought Day, is our president of our club there at Sac State. Um, our Sac City College folks had to, had just a moment ago, told us they had to leave, but... They had a table over here as well. We have some other area chapters. Sonoma State is a new chapter for us. We have a chapter in, at UC Davis, which is a, a kind of a restart um, chapter for us. So all over the country and more and more in California, we have secular students who are stepping up and talking uh, amongst themselves and on their campuses about separation of church and state, about religious freedom, about the, uh, the values that secular people should be uh, exemplifying in their lives, joining with the LGBT clubs on campus to uh, protect rights for, for LGBT people, and so many other projects, uh, uh, science literacy, and, and so much else. So please uh, go to our website, secularstudents.org. Uh, we post stories about what our students are doing there all the time. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, at Secular Students. You can follow us on Twitter at Secular Students. We're constantly putting out uh, really cool uh, stories of what our students are up to. So thanks so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, I also want to uh, and finally introduce Debbie Allen from the Secular Coalition of America. You know, I first met Debbie when she was working in uh, the San Diego area supporting the local humanist and atheist group there and fighting the fight to get that cross on top of the mountain down. Remember that? Um, and since then, she's just been a wonderful friend and supporter of Camp Quest, of events like this. And now she's over in Washington, D.C., supporting all of us in a fight for secular rights. Please welcome Debbie Allen. Hi, everybody. Look, at it gives me a, a great deal of personal satisfaction to be here today. Uh, like David said, I got started in San Diego. Thank you. 
And uh, I started because uh, I was an atheist Jew looking for a place to uh, hang out with people that thought like I did, talked like I did, and sort of had the same sense about the issues as I did, and I found a humanist group, and then an atheist group, and then the United Coalition of Reason got started, and I got involved in that, and that damn cross was still up there on the hill, and I got involved in Americans United, and the military were being treated unfairly, so I got involved with the Military Association of Atheists and Freethinkers, and you know, we can't do it all, but each one of us must do something. And I don't care what it is, just even coming to an event like this today and learning about what we're doing is important. And now I'm in D.C., I'm loving every minute of it, and what I wanted to do was read our, our mission statement because I think it sums up what we're about. The mission of the Secular Coalition for America is to increase the visibility of and respect for non-theistic viewpoints in the United States and to protect and strengthen the secular character of our government as the best guarantee of freedom for all. And that's what we're about. The coalition represents 19 national member organizations that include all of the national organizations that are here today and many others beyond, some that you've heard of, some that you haven't. But we are forming a coalition so that when we go to our legislators, to our lawmakers, we go as a united voice. Our movement doesn't have a lot of money to throw at uh, politicians or our political system, but what we do have is you. Every vote counts, every single vote matters. And if I can say we have 5,000 constituents in your district, and I've got tens of thousands of people emailing you or calling you now about an issue, that matters. What we need now is we've got lobbyists in D.C. What we need is a representative in every district in the United States of America, every congressional district. So there is no person that is not visited by someone like you, someone with secular values. If you want to learn how to do the work, it's pretty easy. It just takes a little bit of organization that we can help with. I want to get your name, I want to get an email, and I want to connect with you at the booth right next door to the volunteer area, um, get you involved in political action if you want to do that. So please join us. Thank you. And if you haven't yet, the uh, Secular Coalition for California has produced a uh, scorecard that compiles all of the currently uh, elected affiliates, or I mean uh, officials, and their voting history as scored by the Secular Coalition. So you can kind of look and see where your uh, state representatives line up, what score they were given. One more round of applause for everybody here and the Wig League of Women Voters.